Another terrific atmosphere this evening. This iconic venue, the Temple Drum, which has been staging this event since 2011. One of the best, without a doubt. Two and a half thousand people can fit inside this arena. There is Louis Heathcote. And here is Mark Allen, who's already won a couple of titles this season. Champion of champions, a tournament he completely dominated. And of course, the shootout as well, which was significant for Allen because it got him into the World Grand Prix for the top 32 on the one-year list. Thank you, first frame, Mark Allen, to break. It's the best of nine, of course, the first of five for a place in the round of 32 and a meeting with Leicester's Joe O'Connor. They've only played twice before. Allen has won both of those, but that was a while ago now, both in the home nations back in 2019, 4-1 in the English Open and the same score in the Scottish Open. Alan McManus alongside me. Alan, I recall you played Louis Heathcote uh, for a place at the Crucible back in 2020 when uh, we were all behind closed doors because of COVID. And I think you were impressed by what you saw back then. Yeah, very good player. I'm, I'm really looking forward to watching this match actually tonight, just to see the kind of progress he's been making. He played just very quickly, he played brilliantly last week, didn't he? To, Get the better of all the lines, 5-0, maybe the best performance as a professional, actually, in a single match. A terrific talent, very gifted, an unbelievably good potter. So very much looking forward to it. Back on the tour this season, having fallen off last season, which was a disappointment for him. In fact, his only highlight was actually in this tournament. He made the last 16 here in Berlin, lost to eventual champion Ali Carter, one of the winners this morning. Beat the Welshman Ryan Davis in Q School 2 to immediately return to the tour. So under no pressure this season as regards his tour spot. Of course, he gets a brand new two year card for winning at Q School. But a tough task in the shape of one of the form players of the last couple of seasons, Mark Allen, quite outstanding last season in particular, of course. Three big titles for him, including his first UK championship. Regained, retained his Northern Ireland Open, won the World Grand Prix and was semi-finalist at the Crucible as well. There is the crowd, a very healthy one once again, with plenty of snooker to keep them entertained. Five tables, as mentioned, in use. Tables one to four can be watched throughout the evening on Discovery Plus. Yeah, thank you, Phil, for that reminder of the dark days of <laughs> long, <laughs> lockdown. Feels like a, another lifetime ago now, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it sure does. But um, yeah, Leo. I'd call him Leo. <laughs> Louis Heathcote. Fantastic long game he had, certainly a few years ago. Uh, probably the hallmark of his game. Very gifted. And news travels fast on the tour as well, and Mark Allen will know all about that performance by Louis just 10 days ago or so. Made a couple of centuries, didn't he? 133 and 114 on his way to that whitewash victory. And of course, before he played Allen in qualifying in Sheffield at the World Championship, he'd beaten Ali Carter. And that ended Carter's 17-year consecutive run at the Crucible, so it was a very notable victory at the time. Yeah, I think back then he had a bit of naivety about him in, in some ways, which of course can help when you're setting out on the tour you don't really know what it's all about he just played off the cuff against 
Ali Carter. He won well that match as well. Just a reminder of what else is going on this evening. As mentioned, it's all available on Discovery Plus. Table two, Alfie Davis against Marco Fu. Table three, Dave Gilbert against Jordan Brown, who shares the highest break of the tournament so far, made him qualifying on 1-4-2. And the other matches, Joe Perry against Xing Zihao, Julian Leclerc against Ken Doherty. Sure, we'll get to see plenty of Louis tonight. He's got quite an interesting way of hitting the ball. He, he's not what I would call a terrific ball striker, but he's such a strong potter. It's an unusual combination he has. There you go. One. This is where you got to learn. Brown's the shot Brown here ball. because yeah, we'll have, to have another look. Brown's the ball to hide in behind here because Pink's got left-hand cover. Yeah, well, that's good. Fun. Just good tactical play that. See, might not have played. Might have played in behind the yellow a few years back, but learning all the time. We've already seen quite a few of the big hitters bow out early here at the Temple Drum. Mark Selby, Judd Trump, Luca Brussel yesterday. Now Mark Allen had a tight squeeze in the end. <laughs> Was taken to a decider oh, against Manasarwin Fetmalaikal, but in typical Mark Allen fashion, he showed his trademark nerve at crunch time and made a century to get the job done. So often we've seen him deliver in final frame deciders. Malgazata Kanieshka, our referee. Oi. And no problem here playing the same shot again. The tiniest of adjustments. Maybe a free ball this time. Foul. And a miss. Louis got four. Uh, not quite. tables this year of course it's now a seven-day event the top eight seeds held back to the venue another excellent long red from Heathcote last season of course only four of the top 16 actually made it to Berlin and only two of those got to the quarterfinals One. Mark Williams, the two times champion, bowed out this afternoon. An excellent performance from Her Guo Zhang. 5 1 victor over Williams. Rob Milkins, Ryan Day, Zach Shorty, good win for him over Alexander Ersenbacher. Zhu Sir and Andrew Paget over Chris Wakelin. 5 3 were among 
the winners this afternoon, along with Trump, who himself is going for a hat-trick of German Masters titles this week. Mark Allen's best ever run in this tournament, the semi-final. Oh, and I slow hit called four. That was a couple of years ago when he lost to Yan Bing Tao. been a feature of Mark's game the last couple of years, been so resolute in his defence. When seemingly in a world of trouble like he is here. Thank you. Kind of similar to the two cushion escape. Plays it on the, the short side this one and then try to get the adjustment. Just like that. Good shot. Very nicely played. victory at the shootout which of course earned him those priceless 50,000 ranking points and got him into the World Grand Prix. It's actually been a pretty modest season in the ranking events for Mark Allen. He only made one quarter final before the shootout. That was the Wuhan Open where he lost to eventual runner-up Carter. He was beaten in that World Grand Prix in the last 16 by Zhang Ander. but he was unplayable in the Champion of Champions. He only lost eight frames in his four matches. Well, the cannon off the black could have resulted in problems for Louis Heathcote. He has at least got the cue ball back to the bottom end. Heathcote's solitary quarter-final ranking appearance was also at the shootout. That was in 2021. We know that Mark Allen plays a slightly different game these days than previously and clearly the results would indicate that that change of tack has paid off but certainly patience I think is one of the virtues that he's added to his match play he's more than happy to bide his time and wait for an opportunity Alan absolutely and his game plan in this match I think we've all gotten it loud and clear he's going to sit back and try to pin 
Louis and Deep Polk every chance he gets and wait on the, a mistake like this. Just got to pop this on the thin side to get it cue ball up table. Yeah, it's well done. One. Good shot, that. Very good shot. It might look a wee bit fortunate, the kiss on the blue, but to pot it thin was the key. Cue ball up table. So Alan wins the safety exchange. What can he now do with this opportunity? Closing in on 600 career centuries, just Six. too shy. He's made 27 this season. Thirteen. The black's currently out of commission, but Alan happy to work with the blue for the time being to try and build a lead in this opening frame. Eighteen. Just the man for the job, isn't it, with his famed cue ball control to keep getting above the blue. Once again, absolutely 19. perfectly played. There's no panic as far as getting the pink on his spot because if and when he manages to get rid of these three or four reds, then from above the blue, 25. like there, it's an easy cannon into the three by the black, isn't it? So, no hurry. Thirty. Might gamble on playing blue and pink here. Third one. Yeah. He's taken these beautifully. It's one of those breaks that that pleases a player. I've got the cue ball so neat and tidy. Thirty. Six. Yeah, just the fact he's got the perfect angle. Will he be tempted this time? Oh, uh, no. <laughs> I thought, well, I'm certain a few years ago he would have deep screw into the three reds. But he just wants to build the lead, so the key shot now. It's another indicator of the Four way in which Allen has slightly changed his approach in the last couple of seasons. More inclined now to play the percentages, minimise risk, take a little bit more time over his shots. Forty-eight. I mean, even on that one shot alone, he didn't go in with a lot of pace. He's trying to caress a couple of reds into the open, so still more work to do. Again, that's superb, isn't it? 49. To finish there, it gives him a couple of options. It's 
it's one of those little breaks actually Phil isn't it show you show it to a lot of youngsters this is why we keep saying finish above the blue he's done it about 10 and 10 in a row something like that this time the attempted cannon hasn't gone to plan but he's in a strong position clearly given the position of the remaining reds a lot of work for Louis Heathcote to get back into this frame from here 40 behind still 59 available in theory but of course the black has been out of commission throughout this frame frames have already been decided this evening. Joe Perry has the first against Jing Zi Hao. Table four. And likewise, Marco Fu, who's been in eye-catching form of late, playing at quite a pace as well around the table is Marco, three times a ranking event winner. He's taken the opener against Alfie Davis. Of course, he enjoyed that very impressive 5-1 victory over Mark Selby yesterday. Yeah, that could be curtains for Heathcote in this opening frame. <coughs> the Reds out in open play, which is what he wanted, but what he didn't need was to leave Allen this chance to polish the frame off. <coughs> Just a couple of Reds required to make that happen. It's been a typically measured Mark Allen frame. Allen Mark II, if you will. Previously, he was known as a player who could burst to life, put together four or five quick Both. frames, quick fire breaks, but he could be streaky, couldn't he? A bit mercurial, he could go missing as well in matches, but 13. in the last season or so, he's been able to become a lot more consistent in terms of his results, he's been winning more often. He's winning the big titles. He has two legs of the Triple Crown now, 20. of course, having won the UK Championship last season. Won the Masters back in 2018. And reached 20. the semi-finals at the Crucible for only the second time in his career when he lost that post-midnight epic with Selby in the spring. So everything is trending upwards for Alan. <laughs> And this has been a very good start. The 54 break, as Alan mentioned, an exercise in how to keep a break going by getting top side of the blue to make your next positional shot that much easier. And although he did eventually miss the cannon he needed, he was in complete control of the frame at that stage with reds awkward. And he's finished the job. Yeah, he sure has, in style. Good performance. Frame one, yeah, it's early days, very early, but looks like an 
old apartments. You won't find a player who doesn't speak highly of the Temple Drum, and Mark Allen, as mentioned, has not won this tournament yet. He'd love to add this to his CV this week. That will be another box ticked. He remains extremely ambitious. 35. Pretty much the perfect frame from Allen. He won the safety battle. He got in with a half century, which was very nicely engineered. And then 46. picked up the pieces at the end of the frame. So Louis Heathcote knows he's going to have to play exceptionally well this evening to have a chance because Mark Allen is looking sharp as he clears the table. The reigning champion of champions winner off to an impressive start here in Berlin this evening. He leads Louis Heathcote by one frame to nil. Five is the target for a place in round three. Second evening of Thank you. Second frame. the German Louis Masters. Heathcote Mark Allen played pretty much the perfect frame. The textbook frame of snooker there. Good safety, a nice half century. And then finish things off after Louis Heathcote left him a red. So the Leicester man getting us underway in frame two. This is their third meeting. Allen having won the previous two for the loss on both occasions of just the one frame. But Heathcote has been in fine form. Allen referenced that superb victory in World Open qualifying at the expense of Ollie Lyons. 5 0, a couple of centuries from Heathcote. challenges of playing in this great arena is of course there are a lot of distractions with the neighboring tables very adjacent and lots of applause coming from all directions for various different matches so that's all part of the challenge here to keep your focus they didn't want that cannon on the blue so again Mark Allen wins the safety exchange Yeah, he sure does, and is he going to make good on it by just dropping this red in? Fully committed, black waiting. Oh, superb. Very Come good on. indeed. Louis there almost turning away like he knows what's coming. That was so well cued, wasn't it, from Allen? Right in the centre of the pocket, just dropped it in for the black. Eight. 
16. Thirty two. Yeah, for once he loses his cue ball quite badly. He does have an alternative to the far right oh, corner. Okay. Not what he was looking for. Mark Allen, 40. So the break ends at 40. Relief for Louis Heathcote. Had that gone in, Allen could well have been looking at a 2 0 advantage. As it is, a chance for Heathcote, who's so good from long range. But he hasn't had much of a look in yet, and that makes a shot like that that much harder when you've had very little table time. And worse for Heathcote is that he's left. Alan with this opportunity to get back in and build on his already handy lead. One. Everyone getting a good look at this one. Six. Seven. Dave Gilbert in the background there up against Jordan Brown on table three. That's another match you can watch on Discovery Plus. First frame is still up for grabs. Twelve. That was a better shot than it looked. Brush cannon off the pack. Yeah, and that should be good enough, providing this black goes in for 2 0. Not getting much of a look in at the moment. 
And that's down to the excellence of Mark Allen's all-round play, not just his potting, but his safety has been very good. He's created chances with his safety play. And although he ran out of prime position and missed to the green pocket just now, 20. all he left for Heathcote was a tough long red, which when you've been under pressure, not easy at all. And back in now in a bit to close this out at the second attempt. It's pretty close already. Black, a red, and another colour for 2 0. It's incredible, actually, the change 20. in this game. I mean, I think pretty much almost every player in the tour there would have tried to get those reds in the play, but. It's a complete transformation the way he goes about it. Paying off tonight. It's another terrific pot. 29. I think he felt himself that he was underachieving. Yes, he'd won. But he felt as though he wasn't delivering in the big events in the way he wanted to. Four. Already, Heathcote needs a couple of snookers. So he felt that changes were required. Of course, he made changes away from the table by losing Allen, a huge amount of weight, determined to get himself in better shape, which he clearly feels has helped his game as well. But there have undoubtedly been tactical changes to go with that. And it's hard to argue with the results that he's gleaned from them. Three big titles last season, a couple already this, and loads of snooker still to be played. Yeah, I think another thing about him, that looking ahead further in the season, it's been well documented. He doesn't have the best record for his talents at the Crucible. He now kind of looks like a Crucible player, doesn't he? You know, he's kind of got that tag on him, a bit like Kyron Wilson probably had four or five years ago. Yes, and I think it was his very modest by his standards record at the World Championship, which was a big motivator to change things. When you consider he turned pro back in 2005, he's only twice made the one table setup at the Crucible, and last season was the second. So it was long overdue, a deep run in Sheffield. No one thing I'd wouldn't want to play him over a best of 33 or 35, wouldn't you? I know Mark Selby you know, got the best of him. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's a big ask. It's going to be a tough couple of days for whoever faces him if he gets there. I think this is further evidence, isn't it? He's over the winning line, but he's taking plenty of time over this. He doesn't want to give his opponent any chance if he can help it to get back into this frame. In the event, there is half a chance here for Heathcote, but clearly he's got a lot to do, needing a couple of snookers. He could do with a bit of table time, actually, just to pod a few. Feel part of this match. He's not had much opportunity thus far. Just to underline that point, just nine minutes of table time for Heathcote. Nearly two frames in. Yeah, just another quick point on that. It shows you how tough you have to be at this game. That match that he won against all the lines, 
Oliver Lyons only played 24 shots in the entire match, best of nine. And yet, here we are tonight. It's the, kind of having the same kind of thing administered to himself. Well, here is a chance to, at the very least, pot a few. Try and establish some rhythm in that cue action. And see what happens. Two snookers required as things stand. Yeah, I know the frame is probably gone. Eight. I don't know why he didn't just hold the spot. It was dead straight, hold the black <coughs> spot. Go on the pink, no problem. So. Hi. Yeah, still just about on one, but uh, you know, fluency in that arm as yet. To be. Frame That's certainly frame the end of the frame. So, problems mounting for Louis Heathcote. It was always going to be a tough ask against one of the form players in the world. And so it's proving Mark. The second evening here at the Temple Drum in Berlin. And Mark Allen is looking razor sharp so far. All Thank aspects of his frame. game working Mark well. He's limiting Louis Heathcote to little more than scraps thus far. 2-0 up. Five is the place in the round of 32 in a meeting with Joe O'Connor, also of Leicester, of course, like Heathcote, who got the better of Steve Maguire, 5-3. There's been some debate in recent times about tour structure and all that, and without getting deeply into it, I, I actually, Louis Heathcote would be one of the players that I would be curious to know what his thoughts on it would be. You know, he's had a, a few years on the tour, he's had a lot of good results, but then he finds himself off the tour, he gets straight back on, but he's had a tough season. Should there be a tiered draw system or... Should it be a flat draw system or a mix or whatever? You know, guys like Leo, uh, Leo, excuse me again, guys like Louis would be certainly up there in terms of asking, just get their opinion on it. Anyway, that's for another day, but uh, it's an interesting topic. You know, as far as he's came on the tour, does he think it's too difficult for a new professional or whatever? You know, it's a, it's an interesting one. Very, very close feeling that he's got to make something happen at the moment because he's not being given any opportunities by his opponent who's suffocating him out there. Incredibly tough red. He did get mighty close to it, but so close that he's left attendance to the pocket, which is bad news. Mark Allen back in.
six. This time Alan was the wrong side of the blue, but he's been able to safely negotiate the bought colours to get himself back at the sharp end of the table. Just seems to Seven. be queuing so smoothly, looking very confident. Mentioned that he was pushed all the way by Fet Malaykel in the previous round and deliver the goods when they were most needed in the decider with a century break. He's never been afraid of the winning line, has he, Mark Allen? Even when he used to play a more False. attacking brand of snooker than he does these days, he's always been rock solid under pressure. Again, nicely controlled by Allen. He wasn't ideally on the blue. 18. But it's worked out OK, I think. Yeah, it was a beautifully judged little cannon, wasn't it? Now, this is the key shot. Black waiting. Guaranteed, you would think, to be nice on it. He pots this. Chance to make... Yeah, you made the pot. Oh, wow, I thought that was in. <laughs> oh. Mark Allen, It looked in, didn't it? It did look in. Yeah. Just shaved the near jaw. OK, now then. The first One. proper scoring chance. <clears throat> First real error that Allen has made. It wasn't a gimme. Clearly, he was hampered with his queuing. Couldn't have got any closer to the pot. Louis Heathcote has had to be very Eight. patient to get a chance like this. Nine. Yeah, the red in the corner is no problem. He's just worried about the, the cannon. They almost want to. Yeah, the, the natural playing it sort of just with top spin is going to hit. 
the left hand of the two reds. Going to hit it pretty much full ball. Mm. He wants to glance it. So it's not certain this that he can slip through for the black without losing the cue ball. Yeah. Point it was five. a bit awkward. Ken Doherty and Julian Leclerc watching on with Leclerc having taken the opening frame against the former world champion. Two nil now to Joe Perry, the former Welsh Open champion over Jing Zihao. Alfie Davis did win that third frame against Marco Fu to lead 2-1, having lost the first. Jordan Brown 1-0 up on Dave Gilbert. And this is tough. Had to put everything into the pot. And in the process, he sacrificed position. 32. You have to see, he's actually very unlucky to double kiss the red. And have the cue ball find its way back there. Great pot. Coates had a bit of luck there by leaving the cue ball so close to the brown, making life awkward for Allen. 14 Heathcote's lead. Tremendous shot. He's actually put Louis in a bit of trouble. That was a corker of a, an escape. No trouble as far as leaving on a, a pot, but giving up superiority, perhaps in this exchange. Definitely didn't go to plan that one, but the result is okay for Heathcote, hence the hand up in apology because he could easily have left Allen something straightforward.
Jordan Brown, meanwhile, has doubled his lead over former world semi-finalist Dave Gilbert. So 2-0 now to Jordan. And 3-0 to Joe Perry over Zheng Zihao. Breaks of 75, 103 and 65 from Gentleman Joe. Great start for him. Just 15 points from his opponent in those first three frames. Has Allen covered the red with the blue? He hasn't. something to go at and get your get his arm through the cue ball properly above all here do not catch a ball color nicely done just needs as Six. always one cast iron positional shot now <clears throat> with the pot obviously Show it tonight, but he's also a player, Louis, that I would call a natural scorer. A bit like Mark Allen, actually. I mean, he just he got that. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, apologies. It's gone quite badly wrong. He can still get to the red just about, but very awkward. But when he gets going, he can, you know, he can put away two, three, four frames in a row, no problem. Very well done. Free. You could see his frustration in landing awkwardly as he did, but he didn't allow that to interrupt his concentration. So back in good position with a chance to get involved in this match. <laughs> Saw off Andy Lee, 5-1 in his qualifying match. Made three 30. healthy breaks in that match. Hasn't had an opportunity really until this frame. Third one to make anything significant, but this is a clear chance to clinch the frame. And just this red should do the trick. 37. Mark Allen could have been in business again in this one. He missed a tricky red to the left centre that was in when he was hampered with his queuing. But Heathcote has done well to get this frame on the board. 45. This is the red, just shaved the jaw, and that was enough at that pace to keep it out. 53. 53. But this should make Heathcote 59. feel a whole lot better. He is a very fluent player. He 
was basically marginalised in the first two frames. But he's taken this chance well, including that excellent recovery one. shot when he was hampered. Likes to get on with it. He's an attacking player. Great long potter. 64. Didn't cue the pink as nicely as he'd like to, but it doesn't matter. The break of 73, more than enough for Louis Heathcote to get himself involved in this match and half the deficit in the process. Mark Allen pegged back here in Berlin. Allen now leading by two frames to one. Thank you, frame four. Louis Heathcote to break. A break of 73 from Leicester's Louis Heathcote. Back in the match, Mark Allen played two exemplary frames, did have a chance early in the third. Missed an awkward red, and Heathcote stepped in after knocking in a red from long range with that excellent break. So 2-1. This is the final frame before the interval. Just now on Discovery Plus, Joe Perry going nicely, very nicely against Xing Zi Hao. 3 0 up and in the table, in the balls, in the fourth frame. And of course, if he wins, Joe, he's going to play a certain Neil Robertson. That'll be an interesting dynamic given that Perry has acted as mentor to Robertson in recent times. Yeah. He looks in great nick, doesn't he? It's good to see Joe Perry. It's been a lean time for him as well as Neil, but uh, yeah. That'll be certainly one to look forward to if Joe can complete victory at some point tonight. Oh, oh dear. Not a gimme with the rest, but an opportunity nonetheless for Heathcote. And once again, having missed, he's left Allen with a fairly easy starter. Yeah, Neil Robertson's been in great form so far. Here in Berlin, two very comfortable wins. 5-1 over Sanderson Lamb, 5-0 earlier over Jimmy Robertson. And he has been scoring heavily. One. Robertson, remember, came into this tournament provisionally in 31st place in the end of season ranking so with a lot of work to do to avoid having to qualify for the crucible this year that could all change of course were he to go on and lift the trophy Six. this weekend he's certainly looking something like his old self again Whoa. it is just a couple of matches but the signs are encouraging meanwhile Mark Allen back in after the error with the rest from Heathcote.
Just checking some of the rankings, the end of season rankings. Actually, Mark Allen's in place to get that number one spot, isn't he, at the moment? 22. Best part of 100,000 points above the current world champion, Brussel. But uh, he's also in a bit of a scrap at the moment with the upcoming Players' Championship 23. and then the Tour Championship. He's 13th at the moment to get in the 16-man players, 12,000 points above that bubble. And of course, it's a 12 man tour championship. So he uh, could make inroads to both of those this week. 28. Some people aren't fans of the shootout being a ranking event, but I'm sure Mark Allen is now because if it hadn't been for that win, he wouldn't have been in the World Grand Prix for the top 32 on the one year list. And that 29. has provided him with. Uh, the launch pad to try and get into the other two players' events. Louis Heathcote counting the cost of missing with the rest at the start of this frame when he had a chance to get in himself. Yeah, I say good on him about the shootout thing. You know, I really do. Half Q will travel. You've just got to do it. That's that's what being a snooker player is. You've got, you know set up camp or whatever tournament will have you regardless of success all right the, the very odd occasion you can take a, a week off but he played in the shootout walked away with a, the winner's prize and as you say it, it, it opens a few doors 34 even for one of the top players in the world Yes, and the idea that the shootout is 35. purely a lottery is, I think, misguided. You have to have some mouse about you, and that is something that Mark Allen has in spades. He's a very clear thinker under pressure. He can handle a rowdy crowd. And you've got to be able to keep your wits about you, haven't you, in that unique environment. Obviously, you've got the time constraints as well. One. But Alan was able to handle all of that, come through with the prize at the end of it, and it has proved to be very valuable in more ways than one for him. Yeah, just one other thing on that shootout. Our colleague Dave Hendon made a point in his recent podcast, didn't he, about the rules of the shootout are in the official rules of snooker. So people who say it's not a proper tournament, officially, well, it is. It's in the rule book the shot clock and all that stuff, so there you go. I'm just passing, <laughs> don't shoot the messenger, that, that's that's in the books. Yeah, should be nicer on this red, so. Yeah, it's always the miss that shot, missing it thick. So. Let's see, the door's ajar, but a half chance for Leo. My apologies, Louis. <laughs> well, we've mentioned already, and we've seen it. It was very good from long range, but this is a tester. Well, it would appear he has covered the red because he's held his hand up there. Could easily have left it for Allen. Well, this one's available for sure. Yeah, so the apology was uh, a little premature. Allen back in.
And this is a great chance to clinch a 3-1 lead at the interval. And you'd have to say on the balance of play, that would feel about right to impeccable frames to start the evening. Six. Heathcote hitting back impressively, having been starved of table time to win the third with that break of 73. But Alan has been in charge of this one so far. Seven. And there's confirmation, 95% pot success. That's outstanding. He's missed very little in live play. Didn't play that well, though, and you can see from his reaction that will annoy him 14. because he was on the cusp of clinching the frame there. The red does go, but it's clearly much more awkward than it should have been. This is a very thin cut with the rest. So, an unexpected reprieve for Louis Heathcote. Back 55 on behind, and not a very appetizing next shot to play, but at least he's still in the frame, which looked unlikely. Three nil now to Jordan Brown over Dave Gilbert. A break of 81 to go with a 52 in the second frame. So Jordan playing exceptionally well at the moment against the former Championship League oh, winner. Ken Doherty has recovered from losing the first frame to lead Julian Leclerc, former shootout runner-up, two frames to one. And Alfie Davis, who lost the first frame to the inform Marco Fu, has hit back very impressively. The Welsh amateur now 3-1 up. Helped by a break of 62 in frame two. He's reduced Marco Fu to just 20 points in the last two frames of that one. So 3-1 lead at the interval. Mark. Well, enemies, Mark Allen, four. Yeah, now, will there be a warning? It looks like he can see a red full ball. And if he can, he's going to have to change his shot. And it's a nasty one. That red that he can see full ball. So I have to give you one good play if I miss it, because I know he loves everything. Yeah, there's confirmation because he can see a red full ball. Has to hit one this time, otherwise he's lost the frame in any case. 63 behind. Still 83 on the table, however, so all is not lost for Heathcote in this frame. Might be now, though, assuming Alan can get through to the yellow. One good positional shot, and it should be 3 1. A 
of red in any color from Fake. here. This isn't a gimme, though. Good queuing required. No bad thing really for Alan that the black is now tied up because the best Heathcote could do from here is tie the frame in any case. And of course would need blacks to do that. Four. Now we're getting word that Marco Fu has sadly had to concede his match against Alfie Davis. You'll recall that Fu took the opening frame. Davis then won the next three, but apparently Marco has pulled out of the match because he's uh, suffering from double vision, which is very sad to Sad to report, of course, Marco has had problems with his eyes in the past. Had to undergo surgery a few years ago and has had to withdraw from his match at 3-1 behind. So we wish him well, obviously. But <laughs> nevertheless, that's uh, a very good result for Alfie Davis. Not the way he would have wanted to win, clearly, but he played some good stuff to win three of the four frames and he is through to the next round. Yeah, that is a real shame for Marco. Obviously won't be listening to this, but I feel for you, pal. I hope it gets all sorted out with your eyesight and everything else sooner than later, because he played brilliantly against Mark Selby. But, uh, let's hope he's back in the big time. Sort of full ball contact here would be would be fine. Yeah, that's a good shot. He knows that Louis has a devil's own job to get some red blacks from this position. Try and sneak in behind the brown. Alfie Davis will now play C. Jai Wee. for a place in the round of 16. value. In fact, there isn't any pot that's of any value to him. Wow, 
this has surely got to go. Cued it well. So, 62 the deficit with 59 remaining, one snooker. Five. By no means an irretrievable situation for Heathcote. Six. Ah, uh, just caught 13. the jaw Sorry. of the pocket and the game is up as a result. So it's Mark Allen as we head to the mid-session interval who has the advantage. He's played very well so far in all departments and thoroughly deserves his two-frame cushion, Louis Heathcote, made a nice break of 73 in the third frame. But Allen has dominated the fourth. And so when they return in around about 15 minutes' time, the champion of champions winner this season will need two more frames to go through to round three here in Berlin. And has he left that red or has he covered it with the green? He has covered it by the looks of things. their third meeting. Alan won the previous two back in 2019. A lot has happened since then, of course, pre-COVID days. The English and the Scottish Opens. 4-1 wins for Alan. Heathcote, who's a former European eight-ball pool champion and was runner-up in the 2015 European Under-21 Championship. Earned his first tour card via Q School back in 2019. Of course, dropped off the tour last season, but got straight back on, beating the aforementioned Alfie Davis to do so via Q School 2. But Alan with an early chance on the resumption. One. Beg your pardon, it was Ryan Davis that Heathcote beat in order to re-qualify for the tour. It's been a modest return so far. As mentioned, he did score that excellent Seven. win over Ollie Lyons to qualify for the upcoming World Open in New Shan. But he lost out to Matthew Stevens, who was beaten earlier today by Judd Trump, of course, in qualifying for the upcoming Welsh Open. So it's been a mixed bag for Heathcote on his return. Heavy contact there for Allen, but it's not scuppered position. Fourteen. Fifteen. Thank you. 
23. As well as he's played with his all-round game this evening, just the one half-century break so far from Allen. That was the 54 he made off the blue in the first frame. But it's been his match play, and that really has been the key to his success. And he's had a lot of it in the last season and a half. Just very, very tough in all departments. More than a hint of the Mark Selby's about Mark Allen these days in the way in which he goes about things. He doesn't push the boat out. He doesn't take unnecessary risks. He's prepared to be patient. Four. He doesn't panic when he falls behind. Of course, he was 6-1 adrift in the UK final last season against Ding. Turned it around for the loss of only one further frame. He won't be happy with that one, though. So the break ends at 34. Looks like a uh, something of a bonus to get what looks like cover and all reds. Yeah, gonna have to bend the cue ball round the edge of the brown there. Looking for a full ball contact, leave the cue ball down this end. of it. Can you hold Mark just sort of explaining to Louis to that I can see the edge of it, <laughs> trust me. <laughs> but I can't see it full ball. Just keeping everything above board. Now can Lou Louis find one good Lose a nice cannon if he plays it softly. Mark Allen only has one half century this evening. He's made very few mistakes. His pot success remains a very healthy 95%. And when he has run out of position, he's taken his medicine, played a good safety. Once again, he's found the balk cushion, keeping the pressure on Heathcote.
Oh, that's a handy rub. <laughs> here Louis can get an extreme right edge of the red but it's not any good to him as you can see there so gonna have to come up with something a one or two cushion escape cushion glancing blow is kind of blocked by the blue isn't it so he really is in a bit of trouble here again just try a full ball contact leave the cue ball in the corner so all he has and just hope he doesn't leave one He's left one, but plenty of work to do with the cue ball. That's actual playing time. Average frame time of shade under 20 minutes. And just enough one. angle for Mark Allen to muscle that red in and get onto the black. Shot. Some shots are like that, full of class. That was one, just a hint. A right hand side to help it out into the open. Black spot looks covered, which is no problem. goes but eight the plant on offer Another good recovery Thank shot you. from Alan. Gradually working his way into a position where he can clinch a 4-1 lead at this visit. at the shootout gave him his 10th career ranking title 19. to tie him up with Jimmy White in the all-time list.
Body language isn't entirely positive Plans in this for. visit at the moment, but he's still potting them. And for Louis Heathcote, serious concerns that he's going to be three down with four to play when Allen's finished this visit. He is on the stretch, though. That's why he wasn't thrilled. Another good pot. And this time he has got top side of the blue. 25. Fifty-nine the lead. Just sixty-seven left, so he'll only need one more red after this blue. Thirty. One. It's going to be 4-1. Another clinical frame, this from Mark Allen. No fireworks, but just rock solid in all departments. <laughs> what a terrific shot that was. The frame one, yes, but the double perfectly executed, and for Louis Heathcote, well, a huge task on his hands now. He actually owns the highest break of the evening, but that's the only success he's had, the 73 in frame three. Markham, 45 and a frame. That break of 45, more than enough for Mark Allen to move with inside of victory here at the Temple Drum. Just one frame away now from a third round meeting with Joe O'Connor. He leads Louis Heathcote. Another Leicester Kewis by four frames to one. Louis with it all to do. Heathcote to break. Mark Azaka, Kenny Ashkar, our referee, confirming the start of frame six, a frame that Louis Heathcote has to win. 4-1 adrift, five the target for a place in round three. Mark Allen in complete <clears> control. <throat> Normally with a pot success in the mid-90s, you'd expect the break roster to be full of significant contributions, but that's not been the case tonight Mark Allen with just the one half century but it just shows that when he has been in Allen he's just not been making any mistakes <laughs> yeah he, he, that's kind of been the difference isn't it is mistakes when and close Mark Allen yeah you're right although he hasn't put any big numbers together what he has done when he's broke down is keep Louis well acquainted with the, the bulk cushion generally and I think he's had a bit of enough now. He's going to try and press off the pack. Glancing blow. Uh, try to go deep. And again, he's offered up a half chance for Mark without really having to work for it. It's been a tough evening for him. Terrific pot again from Allen. It helps when you fall one up, of course, but nevertheless, he struck that beautiful. Most of his pots this evening have been going right in the centre. And then he's after the pack here. Lovely target. Good contact. Throwing a thin one to right corner. Again, he didn't, Five. He didn't absolutely plough into them there, the way I he may have done so I played it with a bit of control but 
once again as he breaks down, it's pinned to the bolt cushion. Okay, then five. Certainly won the safety battle. This time, a safety error from Allen. But what's the damage? Can Heathcote get through to that red? He can. Yeah, but virtually no chance of getting the cue ball back up table unless he jacks up the, the butt of the cue. And punch it with some kind of stun shot. Yeah, that's well played. I mean, it's as good as he could have hoped for. A little bit unlucky not to be on pink. Now, cast iron safety shot. Take your medicine. Oh, he'd go for one. Can Doherty three two in front of Julian Leclerc? See how the cue ball just stops dead there. Unfortunately for Heathcote, no colour available. So just the safety. I think that extended applause you just heard is for Joe Perry, who I believe has just wrapped up a 5-1 victory over Jing Zihao. So the meeting of the good friends and mentor Perry. Triple crown champion Robertson is on in the next round. Neil Robertson to play Joe Perry in round three here in Berlin. Let's hope that one's scheduled on this show table. That'll be one that everyone will want to see for a number of reasons. <coughs> now then, Louis. Red to right middle. He'd feel he's going to play one of them, and it's got to go. I think he's fast running out of time where he's going to hedge bets with this type of shot. You've got to make something happen and quickly.
think snooker back in the day there was a lot of safety battles obviously and a lot of the game was based around that and then came along my lump team players who can turn your lights out in terms of scoring but it's kind of gone back in another way where the top players have embraced this side of the game probably in the last 10 12 years or so yeah that's a very good fortune for mark allen but what is obvious for someone like louis heathcote you're never going to be successful at this game unless your safety is up to top level because you don't get enough chances and that is what Allen has done so effectively tonight, isn't it? He's really starved Heathcote for the better part of any really good opportunities. The best one that Heathcote got, he took, to be fair, with that break of 73, the highest of the match in the third frame. But that was a handy fluke for Allen. How costly is it going to be for the Leicester man? Yeah, good effort, but no, no cigar. Back to the bolt cushion, methinks. But it's a thing, isn't it? When the, once the scoring develops among the top players, which it clearly has, they're all on, you know, six, seven, eight hundred centuries, and some obviously above that. And so that side of the game hasn't been mastered, but it's got to a level where they're all savage scorers, and then it's. I think it's fair to say that they all then think, right, OK, we better get the other side of it sorted out. And now that they have, they know when to use it. Oh, Alan's kept the break going Six. when it looked like it was over with that plant. Yes, he's just two centuries away now, Mark Allen, from becoming just the 10th player to make 600 or more. But there's another example of it, you know, it, look, it all looked lost uh -huh. and he finds a plant from somewhere that puts Louis in, well, a horrible position again. Yeah, that is not friendly, is it? But it's kind of typical of the way Alan operates these days. As mentioned, he's got a Selby-esque streak about him and that's a compliment, clearly such a tough nut to crack these days just the consummate match player that's why he's been able to win five titles in the last season and a half push Selby almost to the limit in that truly epic crucible semi-final back in the spring there's another thing he's developed at the temperament wise he looks like he's sitting in the lounge reading the newspaper and that's not easy when you're out there. You, you, you feel like you almost can't really get at him. A good escape by Louis. Yeah, that's the point, isn't it? These days, you can't tell whether Alan's in front or behind in a match because his temperament, his body language remains serene regardless of the match situation. Didn't panic when he was 6-1 behind against Ding. He was being outplayed in the first half of that UK final, but he backed himself that he could turn things around, which he did spectacularly. Did something similar to Zhou Yulong in retaining his Northern Ireland Open title. He was 4-1 down in that match and won eight in a row. 4-1 behind to Selby at the Masters and came through. Oh, that's a bit One. better. Sort of shot. Gonna have to continue. 
to knock in, but when he gets this kind of chance, he's got to make it count. See, under normal circumstances for any professional player Eight. worth their salt, this is a chance that simply has to be taken. You'd describe Nine. it as an easy chance. There's nothing easy out there, not under the pressure, but that's the... You've got a face up to... Twenty-two. Yeah, so 19 in front and four red blacks with the open ones would be 30. 51 in front with the three reds left, so you're going to need at least one of the three near a cushion. Thirty-eight. Julian Leclerc, meanwhile, has levelled up again with Ken Doherty, so what a play for in that one. Three frames apiece now on table five. So the lead is 50, 51 left. 60. Frame ball. Got 60. Hit the cushion way too early to drop. These pockets are not particularly generous. So, still opportunities for Alan. Yeah, just a wee bit of lack of attention to detail there. When he placed the initial red in the open, it wasn't difficult to get straightish on the black, which would have made that red straightforward. Now, if this red clears the pocket, 
which it has done. One. Oh, he's lost the cue ball somehow. Oh, no. <laughs> he does have it on to the far corner. Just and only just. But how does he get the cue ball out for a red? Maybe left centre also. But boy, this is a tough one. Just too high, and that should be the frame for Louis Heathcote. 49 the difference, just 43 there, so two snookers needed. Barely any space for that red to get through to the pocket. So still a bit of hope here for Alan. He needs two snookers, of course. But you can be sure he'll fight for them. One. Doesn't give his opponent an inch these days. idea to spring the green out from the cushion no good to him stuck there oh and this is a this is a nasty one if it nestles in behind the black I mean it's bad enough it's not an easy hit this one should hit it off the left side cushion Absolute certainty, but should get it.
The Eight. equation remains the same then for Allen. He still needs two four-point snookers to turn this frame around. Very good effort to get in behind the green. Allen Not Eight. quite. Heathcote certainly being made to work to get his second frame of the night. Don't knock the green in, whatever you do. Oh. Mark Allen, four. Yeah. <clears throat> the only good news... <laughs> He's actually left a horrible shot for Mark, and you can't really put him back in. I suppose he could play cushion first, the end cushion, and send the yellow down this end, but... <coughs> Have to trust to luck a wee bit. That's what he's looking at. Just somehow got to get the yellow safe to stay in this frame. So, a further opportunity for Heathcote to put this frame away, with Alan now needing just the one snooker. Two. Back to two again. I think Mark Allen of two or three seasons ago might have conceded this frame by now, but he's cut from different cloth these days. Even so, Heathcote, hot favourite to close the gap to 4-2. Elsewhere, still 4-1 to Jordan Brown against Dave Gilbert. Frame six remains up for grabs. And a break of 67 seven. from Julian Leclerc has accounted for frame seven against Ken Doherty, so Belgian now 4-3 in front, one up with two to play. Yeah, he 
he's doing the correct thing here as Mark. Peel it down to one snooker to tie. frame now into its 31st minute the longest of the match Mark Allen determined to try and win the match here without need of another frame there are always odds against with only one ball to snooker behind but that won't stop him trying Six. Six. Good shot, says Mark Allen. Well, it was a good pot, but of course it was unintended. But it's finally brought an end to that lengthy six frame. And Louis Heathcote keeps his hopes alive to close. So just two behind, but he still needs three in a row to deny Mark Allen, who leads 4-2. Actually to win then against Dave Gilbert on table three. And the only other match seven. ongoing Mark aside Allen from table one, table five with... Julian Leclerc leading Ken Doherty 4-3. Mark Allen now 4-2 up on Louis Heathcote. Still needs one. Heathcote needs the last three. Allen unable to get the snooker he needed on the pink to tie. There are a couple more morning sessions to come this week in Berlin. We'll be back on air tomorrow morning from 9 o'clock UK time, 10 o'clock local. And again on Thursday, another three-session day. This tournament, of course, this year extended to seven days rather than the traditional five. That's what you'd call a dyed-in-the-wall snooker fan. And there are plenty of them here in Germany. They love their snooker. Of course, Lucas Kleckers was on table one last night in a losing cause, emphatically beaten in the end by Judd Trump. But a great occasion for him, nonetheless, to be introduced to this capacity crowd in front of his home fans. Unfortunately for Lucas, Trump spoiled the party and, of course, came through today at the expense of Matthew Stevens. Next up for Trump, it's Matthew Selt. Well, Mark Allen has missed very few like that this evening.
We'll have that morning session for you on Eurosport 1 tomorrow from 9 a.m. in the morning, UK time. Is Karen Wilson, a former champion here, against Ben Williston, Ricky Walden against David Lilly, Zhao Guadong against Tom Ford, runner up, of course, last year to Ali Carter. Mark Davis plays Barry Hawkins. Ben Mertens plays Fan Zheng Yi, and Lu Hong Yu plays Ishpret Singh Chadha. All of those matches coming up in the morning session tomorrow. Alcazata Kanieshka having a good look. Not a great table at the moment with both pink and black out of the picture for the time being. Shot. All right, he's just the wrong side of straight in the red. He didn't have a lot of room to play nice. with there. Gonna have to. We're gonna keep the break going. Play the thinner of the two reds, one would think. Six. Yeah, it's no 
out a lot of value and just dabbing in behind the green. I mean, it might be the only shot he has. If the yellow doesn't offer position, you've got to play it, but it's a fairly straightforward escape. Yeah, that'll be why he's just trying to make something happen. happen it did what a shot that was eight well he's certainly Nine. created this opportunity for himself what a fantastic shot this was one of the best of the night Just the two half centuries from Allen, both in the first frame, actually, 54 and 53. Well, he's missed the cannon that he intended there. Another shake of the head. So getting to the winning line is proving to be a bit of a trial. Still in control of this match, but yet to deliver the killing thrust. Somehow he's found a gap there. Yeah, it was almost a, the impossible gap, wasn't it? I mean, he, he still has a, a play on this to spring the black into play. It's an outside chance, but... Doable. Seventeen. Oh, very nearly landed on the pink, but no cigar. He's jammed between those two reds by the looks of it. So well and truly surrounded here. There's confirmation he can't get through to the pink. At least he doesn't appear as though he can from that angle, but he's right behind it. Green ball. Yeah, he's nominating the green. Oh, he's played that well. Mark Allen, 17. So, bits and pieces from Mark Allen in his bid to get this match won. So another, at best, half chance for Mark. I think there is a case to be made that even for all his success the last couple of years, some things he's not as clinical, perhaps, as he perhaps used to be. Closing matches out. That's a good pot, though, but unlucky with the cue ball. One. He's not as clinical in the scoring department as he perhaps used to be, or maybe dynamic would be a better word. It, will that stand up to the rigours of a, a full campaign at the Crucible? I mean, we're going to find out. Mark Allen won. Come the springtime, but 
I don't know, you know, can he maintain it for that amount of time and the amount of frames to eventually triumph at Sheffield? As I say, plenty of success and all that goes with it, but not as clinical, I think, at times. Meanwhile, in escaping from the snooker, it looks as though Heathcote has left a thinnish cut for Allen, but control of the cue ball could be a challenge. comes the shove as he showed and his win in the last round here it comes down to it he, he can get the job done no problem but here again it's quite a wayward miss that isn't it and he's been very fortunate to not leave anything easier sounds like it's all over on table three Jordan Brown up against Dave Gilbert 4-2 up when we last checked in as though he's just applied the finishing touches. So this is the last One. match ongoing in the arena. Got the reds open, but nothing doing in the way of a colour. Not an easy one for sure. That said, Louis Heathcote will certainly still well, be believing because he'll be conscious of the fact that Allen has just lost his way a little since he took a 4-1 lead. Confirmation of Jordan Brown's 5-2 victory over Dave Gilbert, so former Welsh Open champion safely through. the last 32 will be completed in tomorrow morning session before the round of 32 gets underway three sessions in all tomorrow Oh dear, oh dear, that is a cannon that Louis Heathcote definitely could have done without. All sorts of damage caused there. Could that be the fatal blow? One.
free. Everything just feels like a bit of a struggle at the moment for Mark Allen in his bid to get this match done and dusted. <laughs> Shake of the head. Yeah. He could only just get through to that red, but it was ten. tricky enough to miss. And that is another big opportunity that's gone astray for Alan. Mark Allen's certainly not a player you would ever associate with what Clive Everton used to call clincher's disease, but... One. Getting this match won at the moment is proving to be a little awkward for him. an opportunity hang on one. yeah it's going to pull up short of the pocket it was an opportunity for Louis Heathcote to get himself back into the frame which has gone astray surely Mark Allen isn't going to need too many more opportunities to kill this off one yeah can't see any mistake from here all three reds on to left corner so it should be a formality now. Seven. I think overall he'll be satisfied with his performance, Alan, if not entirely happy. Certainly Eight. room for improvement. He hasn't scored especially heavily. The first half of the match, he was rock solid in all departments. He's just had one or two issues in killing it off as cleanly as he'd like, but... It's all about getting the win in the early stages. The champagne snooker can come later. 14. And he's on the cusp now of moving through. 15. Setting up a third round meeting with Joe O'Connor. This is match ball. Yeah, he's been just a little too schooled, I think. All in all, for Louis Heathcote tonight. He's going to have to play Point better, one. I would think, if he's going to get the best of Joe O'Connor. He had a terrific win against Stephen Maguire, played nicely. Twenty two. player I admire greatly, Joe O'Connor. Good in all departments. Misses very few easy ones. So that's one to look forward to. But Mark, I think he'll know. He'll have to improve marginally to get the better of the other Leicester man. 29. Semi-finalist at the German Masters a couple of years ago. That's his best run here at the Temple Drum. 37. He'd love to add this title to his CV as he chases his 11th ranking crown this week. 39. Yeah, you 
can be a little bit critical of Mark Allen at times with performance, but what you can't criticise is his application and his effort, because as ever, it's been top class. Yeah, he gives every match, every shot these days, absolutely everything. 46. He's very motivated to further embellish his already impressive CV, but he feels that he should have more silverware. <laughs> and he keeps his German Masters ambitions on track here at the Temple Drum this evening. In the end, a comfortable victory for Mark Allen. There's room for improvement for sure, but he had too many guns for Louis Heathcote as he moves through to the round of 32 by five frames to two. So Mark Allen safely three.